Welcome to our exploration of the spiritual meaning behind the phrase, let life be. This simple yet profound concept invites us to experience life in its purest form, accepting and flowing with what comes our way, without resistance or unnecessary struggle. To truly understand let life be, we must first examine our usual interaction with life's events. Often we find ourselves trying to control and predict every outcome. But what happens when we release that control? What unfolds when we stop trying to mold every aspect of our existence? Let life be is not about passivity or resignation. It's about recognizing that the universe operates in a harmony that is often beyond our immediate understanding. When we let life flow naturally, we align ourselves with this greater harmony, which can lead to profound peace and satisfaction. Consider a river. It does not struggle to flow around obstacles. It simply finds the best path forward. Similarly, when we let go of our rigid expectations and allow life to unfold, we often find that solutions emerge naturally, stress decreases, and we experience a greater sense of well-being. But how do we start practicing this in our daily lives? The first step is awareness. Observe moments when you're trying to force a situation or control an outcome. Notice how this makes you feel. Is there tension, anxiety, or frustration? What changes when you shift your approach and let things be? Often you'll notice a shift in your emotional state, perhaps a sense of relief or a newfound calmness. The practice of letting life be also involves a deep trust in the process. This trust can be cultivated through meditation and mindfulness, practices that connect us with the present moment and help us engage with life as it is, not as we think it should be. Meditation, in particular, teaches us to observe our thoughts and feelings without attachment, providing a blueprint for engaging with life's broader canvas. Click subscribe to this channel to get more profound spiritual lessons. In this context, think about the last time you faced a challenge or an unexpected event. How did you react? Was there a moment where letting go might have led to a better outcome? Reflecting on these questions can help us learn from past experiences and prepare us for future ones, where letting life be could lead to more harmonious results. Another aspect of letting life be is acceptance. Acceptance does not mean that you agree with everything that happens or that you do not seek change when needed. Instead, it means recognizing and acknowledging the current state of things without an immediate impulse to alter it. This can be particularly challenging when we face situations that are painful or uncomfortable. However, acceptance has a transformative power. By accepting the reality of now, you free up energy that was previously consumed by resistance. This energy then becomes available for constructive action, creative thinking, and deeper compassion, both for yourself and others. In practical terms, acceptance can be integrated into daily life through simple affirmations or mantras that reinforce our commitment to let life be. For instance, in moments of stress or upheaval, quietly saying to yourself, I allow this moment to be as it is, can be a powerful practice. This doesn't solve all problems instantly, but it can change your relationship with them, often leading to clearer thinking and more effective solutions. Letting life be also means embracing vulnerability. To truly let go, we must be willing to be vulnerable, to open ourselves to the possibility of pain as well as joy, loss as well as gain. This vulnerability is not a weakness. It is a profound strength. It connects us deeply to the human experience and enriches our interactions with others. What does vulnerability look like in your life? Could it mean speaking your truth, even when it's uncomfortable? 
Could it mean asking for help when you need it, admitting you don't have all the answers? Each act of vulnerability brings us closer to a life where we allow things to be as they are, enhancing our capacity to love, to heal, and to grow. As we wrap up this first part of our exploration, consider how letting life be might change the way you approach your day tomorrow. What would happen if you chose not to rush through your tasks, but instead took each moment as it came, with openness and acceptance? How might this change the quality of your interactions, your work, or your understanding of yourself? As we continue our exploration into the spiritual concept of let life be, let's shift our focus towards the deeper implications of this philosophy on our relationships and our interactions with the world around us. One of the most profound areas where let life be can have a transformative effect is in our relationships. Whether it's family, friends, or partners, relationships are often the areas where we seek the most control. We have expectations and desires about how others should behave or how situations should unfold. But what happens when we apply the principle of letting life be to these interpersonal dynamics? When we let go of the need to control others and accept them as they are, we make room for genuine connections. It's about appreciating people in their essence without trying to change them. This acceptance can foster a greater sense of peace and reduce conflicts. It doesn't mean we tolerate harmful behaviors, but rather, we approach relationship challenges with a mindset of understanding and openness, rather than of correction or control. Think about a recent conflict or a challenging interaction. How much of the tension was due to unmet expectations? What if, instead of trying to change the other person, you had simply accepted the situation as it was? This doesn't mean being passive. It means engaging with a sense of acceptance and then deciding how best to move forward without attachment to changing the core of the other person. This principle also extends to our interaction with the wider world. The world is full of turmoil and unpredictability. When we watch the news or engage with social media, it's easy to feel a need to control or fix the world's problems. While it's important to act and serve, let life be teaches us to do so from a place of peace and acceptance, not from an urgent need to control outcomes. This approach not only preserves our own peace, but can also make our actions more effective. We act not out of fear or anger, but from a calm place of deliberate choice. In practical terms, applying let life be in a broader societal context means engaging in activism or social issues with an open heart. We do our part, but we accept that we are part of a larger flow of life that may not immediately reflect our efforts. We trust that each action contributes to a larger whole and that change often happens in waves, some visible and some not. Another vital aspect of letting life be is related to our own personal growth and development. Personal growth is often seen as a linear progression towards a set of goals. But what if we allowed our growth to be more organic, accepting the ebbs and flows of our development? This doesn't mean we don't strive to improve or overcome our weaknesses, but rather, we accept that growth sometimes comes in unexpected ways and times. For example, consider a skill or a trait you have been trying to develop. Perhaps you've faced setbacks or progress has been slower than you expected. Can you see the possibility that these setbacks are part of your growth, not apart from it? Each challenge or failure is an integral part of learning and expanding. Here, letting life be means trusting in your own evolution, knowing that growth is not always linear and that patience is a key component of personal development. As we think about personal growth, it's also important to consider how we deal with change. Life is inherently changeable, yet one of the most common human fears is the fear of change. Letting life be encourages us to embrace change as a natural and inevitable part of existence. 
How we respond to change determines the quality of our lives. Imagine a scenario where significant change is happening in your life. It could be a career change, a move to a new city, or a shift in a relationship. What if, instead of resisting this change, you embraced it as an opportunity? What new experiences could this change bring? How might it help you grow? Lastly, as we explore the concept of letting life be, we also touch upon the idea of presence. Being present is perhaps one of the most direct ways to practice this philosophy. When we are fully present, we are naturally in a state of acceptance. We are engaging with things as they are in the here and now, not as we wish them to be. Were there moments when you were fully present? What did those moments feel like? The practice of presence can be cultivated through mindfulness techniques like focused breathing or mindful walking. These practices ground us in the now, teaching us to engage fully with each moment, letting life unfold in its own way. As we wrap up this second part of our discussion, reflect on how letting life be could transform your approach to change, personal growth, and presence. When you're ready, we can proceed to the final part of our journey to deepen our understanding of this spiritual concept. Let me know when you are ready to continue. In this final segment of our exploration on Let Life Be, we delve into the spiritual depths of surrender and the ultimate freedom it can bring into our lives. This concept goes beyond mere acceptance and touches the core of our spiritual existence, where we connect with the essence of life itself. Surrender is often misunderstood. It is not about giving up or losing. Rather, it is about letting go of the illusions of control. In the spiritual context, surrender does not mean inaction. Instead, it is the active engagement with life in its entirety, accepting both its currents and its calm with equal grace. It's about aligning with the larger flow of life, recognizing that we are part of a vast, interconnected universe. To practice surrender, we must first recognize the limits of our own power. While we can influence many aspects of our lives, we cannot control everything. The weather, the actions of other people, and the passage of time are all beyond our direct control. When we surrender to this reality, we open ourselves up to a more profound trust in the journey of life. This trust does not come easily. It requires faith and courage. But what are we placing our faith in? It is the belief that there is a greater wisdom at work, that life itself has a rhythm and a reason that, while not always apparent, moves towards a balance and harmony. This faith can be nurtured through various spiritual practices such as meditation, prayer, or contemplative walks in nature. These activities connect us with the moment and with the greater forces at play, helping us to cultivate a peaceful acceptance of whatever life presents. Now let us consider the practical aspect of surrender in daily life. Imagine facing a situation that is out of your control, perhaps a delayed flight when you have an important meeting to attend. The initial reaction might be frustration or anxiety. However, embracing the concept of let life be, you might take a deep breath and surrender to the situation, finding ways to utilize the time productively or simply to relax. This shift in perspective can transform an irritating delay into a valuable moment of pause in your busy life. Moreover, surrender brings with it a profound freedom, the freedom from the burden of needing things to be a certain way. When you no longer cling to specific outcomes, you become open to the full range of possibilities that life has to offer. This openness can lead to unexpected joys and opportunities. It can also foster resilience as you become better equipped to handle life's inevitable ups and downs. Imagine living each day with this kind of freedom. How would it change your interactions, your decisions, and your feelings about the future? This is the power of truly letting life be. 
It is not a passive state, but an active embrace of life in all its complexity, without attachment to how things should be. Lastly, the spiritual journey of letting life be is also about embracing the mystery of existence. Life is a mysterious journey, with twists and turns that often defy logic and expectation. Embracing this mystery can make our lives feel like a grand adventure rather than a series of problems to be solved. It invites us to experience wonder and awe, which are essential components of a rich spiritual life. Consider the universe with its billions of galaxies and the vast expanses of space. Our own lives are part of this incredible tapestry. When we step back and view our lives from this cosmic perspective, our troubles and triumphs take on a new light. They are parts of a much larger story. As we conclude our exploration of Let Life Be, I invite you to carry this concept into your daily life. Let it gently remind you to embrace the moment, surrender to the journey, and celebrate the mysterious, beautiful ride of life. Remember that each moment is a unique bead on the string of your existence, precious and significant in its own right. Thank you for sharing this journey with me. May you find peace and joy in letting life be, embracing the flow of existence with an open heart and a trusting spirit. As you move forward, carry these insights with you and watch how they transform your experience of life.